So in the last video I covered or went through and derived a little bit of math with you using dot products and cosines. In this video I actually want to code this. I use the Windows snipping tool to take a screenshot of what we had in the last video so then we can refer to it. In fact we should probably actually refer to it. <laughs> okay. So in the end all I care about is the distance of the mouse to the line, the perpendicular perpendicular distance. And the way I gather that is by finding the length of r, and to find the length of r, I don't even have to find r itself, the vector, which is the length and the direction. All I care about is the length. In order to get that length, using some trigonometry, I found out that the magnitude of s cosine theta is equal to s dot t, and that's the length of r. Okay? So, first thing we need is t. In order to get t, I need to take this turret vector, normalize it, and take the perpendicular of it. So, uh, let, let's do that. Um, I'm going to make a function. Let me just show you the current state of my game. I think I showed this to you in the video. I'm going to fly around. I'm going to stop the ship. Let's get a turret. All right. Uh, I'm going to say float turret length. I'll make 50 pixels. Vec to turret. Uh, how about turret length, not turret length. Turret is a turret length, we'll just point it straight out in the x direction. Now to, to draw that, I also have this draw line function I added, um, just like Jim Cobb. I'm getting tired of typing dot x and dot y. I just want to go from this vector to this vector, so I have a nice adapter function. You'll hear that as a design pattern. I'm simply adapting one interface to another. Um, let's draw our turret vector. In order to draw our turret vector, let me start the game up again. Um, to get the turret vector, I need uh, to draw it right here on the ship. Okay, it'll point straight out to the right. In order to draw that, I need to start the vector at the ship's position and then end it at the end of the turret vector. I don't want to draw from 0, 0 to the turret vector because that'll give me this. All right, I need to add the position of the ship, or start at the position of the ship, and then for the endpoint, add the turret vector itself. So let's do that. Let's say a uh, draw line G from the ship's position to the position plus the turret. Okay, run this. You'll see I have a nice turret hanging out here. Bring the ship onto the screen, and there you go. Okay, so far, so good. So our next step is to find out how far away is the mouse from this line, okay? And if you remember from the math, I just need to get this S vector, which is our mouse vector, which I find by subtracting the ship's position from the mouse's, mice, mouse's position. <laughs> and then um, I need to dot that with T, okay? So, so actually, to get T, I have to... Uh, normalize and then get the perpendicular. So let's make a function here. Float get mouse distance from turret line. All right. I'll in a future video I'll show you how to get rid of this line portion. But when I say line, literally I'm just getting the distance of the mouse from this line right here. Okay, not just the line segment, which would be the turret itself. We'll cover the line segment in a future video. Alright, so what are the things we need? Sorry to keep dragging this on and off the screen. I need this normalized uh, perpendicular turret vector. So how do we get that? Um, vec2, I'm going to call it our target vector. That's what I called it in the last video. Is the turret vector normalized? And I want to get the clockwise uh, perpendicular counterclockwise or clockwise doesn't really matter. The way I drew it here, it looks like I went clockwise, but remember our y, uh, our positive y is down. Okay, so this is actually pointing in the negative y direction. It's kind of like we've taken the clock and we're looking at the back of the clock instead of the front of the clock. We reflected it. Um, so that's why I'm going clockwise just to keep consistent with my diagram. If you don't believe me, uh, you could definitely draw this vector and you'll see that it points up on your screen instead of down. Uh, Alright, so I have the target vector. I need the mouse vector. So vec2, let's get the mouse position first. 
and uh, I believe core input get mouse x core input get mouse y okay that gives me the mouse's position that feels weird to say but if my mouse position is here it's actually uh, a vector from the origin of the screen out here I don't want that vector I want the vector from the origin of the ship so I have to subtract the origin ship of the ship from the mouse position so let's do vec2 mouse vector gets um, mouse position minus the position of the ship okay so the next step is pretty straightforward I have S the mouse vector I have T the target normalized normal vector in order to find S cosine theta which is the distance of R not necessarily where R is pointing but just the distance and that's all I care about in order to find S cosine theta all I have to do is dot these two vectors together so let's do it I'm going to return the dot product of our target vector with our mouse vector and that will give us the mouse distance from the turret line. Now I want to actually show you that this works. Let's debug it a little bit um, by actually drawing the current value or distance of the mouse from the turret line. So I'm going to add a float, debug float, and I generally name variables with debug so I can uh, do a pass being sure I can pull out all my debug stuff just in case I accidentally leave it there. Uh, and uh, let's say debug float gets get mouse distance from turret line so we'll just update that every update um, update call and then in the draw let's bring this up a little bit I could organize my code a lot better than I have it right now um, in the draw I want to actually draw that value to the screen so in order to do that I need to convert a float to a character array and there's lots of ways to do it I'm going to show you as Kind of a common way of doing it. Hopefully you pack this up, throw it in your engine so you can reuse it. But char buff, uh, I don't know, we'll go nice and big. Throw it on the stack, make a character array buffer. And then I need sprint, I don't have it. So I'm going to go to the top of the file, pound include C standard IO, control minus to go back to where I was coding. Um, sprint F, and we'll use the safe version. Uh, let's see, destination. Destination is going to go buffer, and I believe we go percent %f for floating point value, and I want my debug float. So that's going to take the debug float and can put it into this char array as a character. All right, and now I say g dot draw, draw string, and uh, we'll do it at 0, 0, and there's my buffer. Okay, drum roll please, let's run this. Okay, you see the numbers are changing right here. That's kind of fun. Let's bring the ship onto the screen. I'm going to stop it. Okay, now notice as I go left to right, that number doesn't change very much. Okay, as perfectly as I can go left to right. Okay, but if I go up and down, look at that number change. As I get closer and closer to the line defined by this turret vector, you see that value gets closer and closer to zero. Now it goes negative because I'm below it. All right, I can even emphasize this by drawing this line out. Oh, well, as best I can, I guess. Draw this line out like there. All right, go back to my mouse. You see, doesn't matter where I'm at in this direction, I always get the appropriate value for how far away I am from this line. So now I've shown you the code to test the mouse's position distance from the turret line. So, pretty cool. But that's not going to work for grabbing this turret and moving it around because I really only want the mouse to grab the turret when it's in this range right in here. You know, if I push the mouse down here and start swinging it, that's not going to make sense. So our, we, need, we need to do another test. And oh, by the way, it uses dot products again. I'll show you. And it's a trick I learned from Jim Cobb. Um, anyway, but now at least you know how to find the distance of a point to a line.